Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Master Coach Carrie Marshall, and it's time to go after those goals. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted. I never drop. If you feel a bit out of control and out the box, here's a way that you could drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Carrie Marshall. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Carrie Marshall, and today we are going to talk about your environment. So, I want you to think about where you're sitting right now. It could be in your car, it could be in a room, wherever you are. I want you to just kind of look around at what you're actually looking at. Our environments are so important to us uh, for so many different reasons, but I want you to really think about the type of environment that you are in the most. So, when we're talking about our goals, we have to really remember that there's going to be times and spaces and people and places that we're going to be around that will either inspire us and have us really wanting to go all in and create something exciting, or it's actually going to hinder us and kind of almost be like a wet blanket. So Look once again around at your environment. Now, for I know that a lot of you actually watch or listen to this in your car. So your car is a really good example of sometimes our unintentional environments that we create for ourselves. So uh, my daughter just started driving and we have a car that she can uh, drive. And my husband went out and got into it the other day and uh, he had to take it somewhere. And he immediately came back inside. And I was like, oh, did you forget the keys? And he was like, no. So he like brought my daughter outside. They had a conversation about her environment, her car, and how messy it was. Now she has two daughter, two daughters. She has two sisters that she uh, drives around also. So she's kind of our main like Uber driver for all of the kids. And so, you know, as she went outside and was talking to my husband about her car, she was like, well, some of this isn't mine. Like some of it is like other people's and this and that. So he was telling her he needed to, she needed to clean it up. And he also told her like, Hey, you are in charge of making sure that people do not disrespect your car and your space. And so he kind of talked to her about how environments are so important and that yes, of course we want our other girls to clean up after themselves, but really it's up to her as the driver of that car. And because we have put her in charge of that car, that she really is in charge of like looking behind her and saying like, Hey, grab your backpack, get your dance stuff. Like don't leave your blanket in here. Whatever it is that she doesn't want in that environment, she needs to take care of. So The reason that our cars are so important to us, because I don't know about you, but if you're a parent, um, you might be doing a lot of driving. You might be in your car quite a bit, but we don't really think about like intentionally what we have created within that car. So the reason that this is important is it is a lot of times our mind is in this space of like consuming and not exactly knowing what we're consuming. And so when we talk about your environment, like your car, you want to not just be thinking about like, is it clean? But you also want to be thinking about like, well, what do I do when I'm in my car? Do I listen to really loud music? I do sometimes for sure. (laughs) But like, what are you doing in your car? Are you really intentionally like focused on the road? Are you listening to podcasts? Are you gossiping with your friend, your girlfriend on the phone? Like, what are you doing to create an intentional environment wherever you are? And so that car is just one example. The reason that we talk about your environment when we talk about goals is that um, I was coaching a lady several years ago um, and she was a designer and she had these really big goals within her company. Um, She had a small business where she would do design for other people uh, for their houses and other projects. And she kept saying that she would get stuck at this one certain spot. And she was like, I can't get past this. I can't get past this. And this we went this went on for months. Now, one of the things that I noticed is that behind her, when we were talking every time, she was in a pretty cluttered space. And so one time I just kind of asked her, I said, what's going on? Like, it's pretty cluttered. And she was like, oh, this is just my office. This is just how it is. 
And so I asked her, I said, when you're trying to go and do this project, do you usually do it in your office? And she was like, yes, I do. I said, okay, I think that your environment might be impacting your creativity and your willingness and ability to like go a step further into your goal. And she was kind of like, yeah, I don't know, like maybe, maybe not. And I said, well, let's just try. I said, where's somewhere else that you could maybe work on this project? And so she decided that she would work on it outside in the morning um, with a cup of coffee. She just kind of take, you know, 20 minutes to work on it. She had that project done by the next time that I talked to her. And so I was talking to her about it and I said, like, what made that difference for you? And she said, well, I realized that when I'm in my office, there's two things happen. I'm either really, really heavily involved in a project, meaning like a design project, not the not the type of project we were working on, but a design project. And she's like, and I'm used to the clutter and I can just kind of block it out. She's like, but then when I was doing this new project, she's like, I got so distracted all the time. And she's like, I would like find a swatch, like a color swatch of like this and be like, oh, that goes with this project. So she kept getting distracted by her environment. You imitate the environment that you have created for yourself or the environments that you're in. This is why sometimes we notice that like uh, a good example of this would be like kids go to school and they might imitate what they're around at school and be a completely different person at home happens at work. It happens all over the place. We'll notice and people will say, oh, I wouldn't ever thought that that person would do that. But what happens is we start to imitate the our environments. And so you have to be really conscious about the type of environments that you're in. And if it's your own environment, like my daughter's car, you need to be very intentional about uh, creating the environment that you want and then maintaining that environment. Because it's not just about the cute throw pillows. Those are kind of fun though. Um, And it's not just about, you know, uh, keeping it clean. It's about like, is this the space that I want to be in? So I think I've talked about this before, but my husband and I have very different tastes when it comes to our home environment. And so, you know, it's taken us, I think we've lived here for five years now, but it's taken us five years to get some of these rooms to where we like them. We just recently had two rooms that kind of came together for both of us um, where we're both like, okay, this is done. Like this feels good. It looks good. Um, And what's happened is I noticed that when I'm not in an environment in my own home that I like, I have a tendency to want to change things quite a bit. And this is like our inside joke that is so funny, but I move furniture constantly. If I don't like a space, I will move furniture all the time. Couches, chairs, TVs, wall hangings, like all of it. And so uh, my oldest has friends over quite a bit and she'll kind of like tease and they'll come in and be like, oh, where'd your mom move that thing today? And so um, I was moving a couch recently with my husband to the spot that I was like, okay, this is going to be done. Like once I get this couch moved in, it's perfect. I love it. And my daughter walked in and she goes, oh, is that, is it, is it that time of the month? And I looked at her and I was like, what? And she's like, yeah, you know, that time of the month for you when you move furniture around everywhere. And we just busted up laughing because I really do move furniture. But here's the interesting thing. When I'm in an environment that I love, that lights me up, that I feel creative, that I feel is safe and home and like what what I love, I never touch it again. I really do just go in and make sure that it's cleaned and organized and all of that. But for instance, my office, some of you might have seen it on some of my videos on YouTube or on uh, Instagram, but my office, I love my office. Uh, I have two offices. My husband and I have, uh, I have an office and he has an office. I love my office. I never go in and try and change anything. I adore it. And the reason that I adore it so much is that it's set up really well for me and my daughters to be able to work simultaneously in the same space. I love the colors. Um, my my cousin, Whitney Kaili, uh, helped me set it up. She's an awesome designer. So she really kind of brought all of the things that I love together and then made it functional for us. So <laughs> really long note about me and moving furniture, but I want you to just be aware of your environment. And if things aren't making sense to you, it doesn't mean that you have to like go out and redo it 
instantly. Like I said, that other room in our home, like our front room, I guess it would be living room. Um, it's taken us five years to do. And one of the reasons that it took us that that long is because number one, Curtis and I couldn't really come to the same agreement about it, but also we would put things in there and then it wouldn't feel right. And so we'd move it out. And so I want you to just kind of think about for yourself. I mean, some of you would walk into my house and be like, what is happening? <laughs> but I walk in and there's two rooms that I adore. And so I want you to just kind of think about your environments and how you're intentionally creating your environments to be something that are actually supportive of you and not just the thing. So uh, one of the things that I always talk about is that sometimes you need to go against the norm and create environments that just make sense to you. So I have one of my clients that actually has zero dining room. He, him and his wife took out their formal dining room and they made it an art studio. And um, it's been really cool to just be able to see their entire family, be able to utilize the art studio. And they have like a breakfast nook. And he's like, we like eat at the breakfast nook 100% of the time. And he's like, there's only like one time a year that I ever think like, hmm, that'd be nice to have a formal dining room. And he's like, and really, it's not even that much. So once again, I want you to just kind of think about your environments as spaces, but I want you to just look around where you're at right now and ask yourself, like, is this a space, an environment that I feel is supportive, is safe, is creative, is inspirational. Whatever you decide you want your spaces to look, I want you to just go ahead and think about that. Now, the other thing that we talk about when we talk about um, environment is really not only thinking about like your space in general, but I want you to think about the things that are in there, right? Like the chairs and that type of stuff, like objects. But I also want you to think about people, so oftentimes when we're in environments, a lot of times if we're like out in public, we don't get to choose the people that are there, but we do get to choose the type of people that we interact with and how we're going to take information in. And so for instance, um, I was at a, a, a networking event a couple weeks ago and I realized that most of the people there probably weren't my people to like be networking with, but that there were some really interesting people and that I really wanted to just go out and meet people and have them like, you know, tell me what they do and that type of stuff. So I really wanted to be supportive of the community, but I wasn't really there for my benefit, if that makes sense. Now, the reason that I thought about that with environment is that created a space where I knew what the environment was going to be. I wasn't there to pitch myself. I wasn't there to talk about books or coaching or anything like that. I really was there to just be supportive of the community and to really just kind of talk to people and have a good time. So when I thought about the environment that I was in, I could have really taken that and been like, this isn't my jam. These aren't my people and I'm going to leave. Either one would have been fine. There's nothing wrong with leaving a networking event that's not working for you. But I want you to always think about the type of people that you're surrounded by. So we talked about objects a little bit. We talked about people. And once again, we talked a little bit about like what you're hearing and experiencing. So once again, I want you to really think about like what type of environment am I creating here? So I had a client that um, we were talking about environments and he was talking about how some of his environments are really good for him but maybe not so good for his kids. And so I want to kind of give you this example because this is going to kind of help us decide when we're talking about environments, like when we take in everything, is it the type of environment that we want to create? So one of my clients has a man cave and he loves it. It is his cigar room. And so he said he'll have friends or people that he's uh, working with or whatever come over. There's like a separate entrance that they can come into and it's this really cool space. And so he said, I have an entire thing of cigars. And then of course I have my alcohol wall. And then he has some memorabilia that's also really cool. And so he was like, I really loved creating this space because it's just been really fun to be able to have people over and just kind of have this really cool experience. So we were talking about how uh, beneficial this has been for him and for his business, honestly, because he's been able to have this space. And he said, it was really beneficial until I realized that one of my, one of my kids has been sneaking in and stealing alcohol, cigars, 
also when he wasn't there, having parties in there. And so he kind of was like, okay, I don't know if this environment is now actually beneficial for our family. And so he had to really decide for himself, like what's going to change about this environment. So we kind of talked about a couple of different things. Number one is there was a lock on the outside, right? Cause he had an outside entrance. So there was a lock on the door there, but then there wasn't a lock on the inside door. So there's two doors in this space. So we kind of talked about, well, do you want to just lock it up and change the locks every so often? And he just kind of said like, maybe, I don't know. Well, then he talked to his wife and he realized his wife has never really liked that room. She hasn't loved having people over. Um, when they had smaller kids, they have a kind of a big range of kids, but um, when they had kind of their youngest was small, she said, it's not soundproof. And so like you guys, you and your friends get really loud down there. And so she's like, I haven't really said anything because I I love that you love it. But she's like, honestly, if I had a choice, I wouldn't have that room in our house. And so what they did was they actually took out that room. They decided that number one, it wasn't really conducive to the type of environment they wanted to create in their home. Um, and so they changed it all. They actually made it now a family game room. And so he said that that has worked really well for them to be able to now have a space. But now he took his man cave and moved it to his office. And so he said that has really been super beneficial for him. He said, I like it more over there. Um, I use it more over there. But also he's like, I feel like my environment at my home is now just for my family. It's not this hybrid business slash family slash what rooms can we not use? What rooms can we use? Um, and then of course, just he said, taking objects, right? Alcohol and the cigars out of the environment so that his kids weren't kind of uh, taking advantage of it. So I want you to just kind of think about so many different things when you walk into a room. When you walk into your space, whether it's a room, whether it is a car, whatever your space is, it can even be a backpack, by the way. Uh, I had one of my clients and I talk about the environment of his backpack and how messy it was. But I want you to just kind of think about like why that's important to you and what needs to change or adjust so that it's really supporting you in the best way possible. I can tell you from my own experience and from all of the clients that I've helped that your environment matters. You imitate your environment. If you are around an environment that's not making sense for you, let's change it. Let's go ahead and clean it up, um, change some things around. If you need, if you need furniture moved, call me. <laughs> but I want you to just kind of understand that that goes for things in your room. It goes for clutter. It goes for people. It goes for what you're consuming. So make sure that you're taking your environments really seriously, because I promise you, if you are not getting the results that you want in your goals, one of the things that you need to look at is your environment. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to this podcast episode. If you're ready to get in the driver's seat of your own life, you can come and follow me at drive your thoughts, coaching on Instagram, or come and see more ways to work with me at driveyourthoughts.com. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted, I never drop. If you feel a bit out of control and out the box, here's a way that you can drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Carrie Marshall on the clock.